Okay, so recently I got a lot of requests to make a tutorial on how to make 3D hair. So if I hop right into it, first of all I want to add a Steve. And this Steve dude is the guy I want to give 3D hair to. How do I do that? Well, don't mind that, that's just my comfort zone. How do I make hair 3D? Well, we do know a method on how to get 3D stuff in my animator. Those stuff are called items. This is pretty 3D, right? And as far as I'm concerned, this image can be modified to display other kinds of items. So that's what we're doing right now. Well, first of all, you should get something called an item sheet. This is basically a transparent image which is marked on 16 by 16 pixels to show you where the limits are of the each item. So if I open this with some program that supports transparency, yes, I could use Photoshop, but this is way too advanced, and Paint.net is something very simple that also works, so I mostly use this for my animating purposes. You don't, you don't need some advanced equipment, Paint.net will do. So I usually have the skin here and the item sheets as well. I open them both at the same time so I can switch between them, which is kind of easy. You can just make all the hair as one item, that's absurd. But you can, however, use every single face in conjunction to create a 3D hair model. So I'm gonna do just that. I want to copy the front face of the hair, which is this. I'm gonna copy it and paste it under this tiny square. I have to keep it in between the limits of this square, which is marked right here, 16 by 16. My animator uses that as one item. And if whatever you draw here can be used as an item in the program later. So what I want to do is delete the skin because I just want the 3D hair. And also delete the edges or else this is going to be in the item. And uh, if I save this image now, this is saved as an item sheet. Wait, so if I open this, as you see there's a little uh, hair texture up here. This is what I just drew and this is the image saved. So if I go to my animator and I import an item, I'm going to name it hair1 and as you see you got a bunch of different items here which don't really mean anything but I can switch the image of where this is coming from so I browse the image I created which is this item sheets thing and uh, it shows you this little green the grid you can also adjust adjust the size of the grid of the items well, let's just keep it 16 by 16 so it works as it should as you see, I got this little frame here. Why? Because there's a random item selected. But up here, as you see, we got this hair we just copied from Steve. And this is your 3D, 3D hair. I can lock this hair onto his head. And what it happens? Well, I can move it here. And I have 3D hair. This is the front face of his hair. Okay, so if I adjusted it, also what's bothering me is this custom rotation point, it's way down here. I want this to be up here. What I can do is click this little thing called custom rotation point and basically move the Y down. So now the hair's rotation point is in the center. Well, it's not in the center, I can just type the correct value 9. I just move it up and that's it. This is the front face of your 3D hair. What I, don't, what I can also do is scale it up a bit. 1.1 to be exact and it gives you this nice 3d look you can also adjust this if you want like have it 1.06 or something whatever suits you best but now as you see we got this little thing under the skin which looks kind of funny and we don't want that so what I'm gonna do is open up the Steve skin and also paint the hair away so it's not there well, just select random pixels and, uh, you know, from the skin and draw it on the top. I'm not doing this right, there's a little pattern, you know, it's darker on the edges and lighter in between. So I should put the darker on the edges like it should be. Okay, okay so after messing around, let's say this is it. So basically what you do now is copy the next frame and put it in the second slot of the item sheet, which is this one right here. Doesn't matter where you put it, it just has to be in between this little square drawn, drawn here. Let me just stop right there and tell you you only need one of these items because those two faces are exactly the same. You don't need to draw two items if it matches, so 
Yeah. Once you drew all the faces here, you can just make Steve a bald person, so delete all the skin underneath. Of course, I'm way too lazy, so I'm just gonna paint the entire thing in one color, because I'm lazy. But you know the purpose, you just have to make it nice. Save both of the images, I'm gonna save this as Steve Dude. Now I can click close paint.net and that's it. If I go here, as you see, the hair is not there yet. Why? Because it's outdated, so I have to browse for the image again. Item sheets, yeah. And it says the resource with this file name has already been added into the project. Do you want to replace it? Yes, because it's the exact same image except that it has all the hair. Now I'm gonna name this hair2 and lock hair2 onto his head. I wanna turn it 90 degrees, minus 90 degrees in this case. Adjust the rotation point because I want to keep things organized. Also, the previous extrusion is 1.06 scaled up, so I'm gonna do the same with this one, 1.06. And I'm gonna put the hair where it, sh where it should be. You now have a 3D hair. Although it looks kind of funny here in the edge, so I might just move this back a bit. And give it a nice corner bump here, because it looks pretty sympathetic. What I also want to do is copy hair too and just invert the X, so it's instead of minus 3.9, I'm gonna put it on plus 3.9. So it's exactly the same on the other side without any effort. If I want to make a new item, name it hair3, select the item sheets you just changed and select the next frame, I mean the next item, lock it onto his head. Now, when we're done, we see the original hair underneath his 3D hair. So what I want to do is click the Steve guy here and change his skin to the bald dude we just made before. And as you see, no more glitches. This is it. This is your 3D hair. You can do the same with your entire body as well. Use other parts of the skin, like this shirt for an example. Every single face, add it as an item and then import it here. That way you can make great rigs with a lot of extrusions and it looks pretty damn nice. However, if you want your hair to be more high quality, you can do the following. Open up the item sheets again and let's take a look at this little square here. This is where the item is. You can paint everywhere in between. So if I delete this 3D, if I delete the hair we have now and select a pencil and draw this nice little hair preset thing. Just color it up and then go to effects noise add noise now I want the color saturation to be zero so it only uses brown tones now the intensity should be dropped down until it gets smooth effects like this and this looks like hair so I'm gonna keep it this way if I save this image now and open up my animator select hair one and browse for this image again for it to update you get this well this is huge the reason why this is so big, if we compare this item with the rest, this is twice as bigger. Because this is 16 by 16 in diameter and this is 8 by 8. So we kinda need to resize this to twice as lower as it was before. So this is 1.06 of heights, just like the rest of the items. If I open the calculator, not because I need it, but just because for demonstrational purposes, and we see the 1.06 divided by 2 is 0 0.35. Basically what I want to tell you guys is that you have to resize this to twice as lower as it was. 0 0.35. If I put this down now, Steve's got a more HD haircut. What you can also do now is just put it out more or even scale the Z because the Z doesn't really mess up with the other you can draw your entire hair based on this, maybe even try harder for it because this is just sloppy. I did this for demonstrational purposes only, and all my other rigs use the same method. These are just items. If I open up the hair, this is the hair folder, and these are the hair layers. If I open the hair second layer, these are the layers sticking out even further. This is one layer, then I added another layer, and on top of that I added the third layer which makes it even better. On the items on the top, I even left this tiny little hole here for the hair to look more natural. 
draw on the item sheets, import the item sheets as items and then lock them onto the head. Basically that's how you do 3D hair. If you want to add more layers, you can open up the item sheets again and then copy bits of the hair you want them sticking out. So let's say I want this to be sticking out of the hair even further. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it in the next item sheet. So now delete the frame or else it's gonna be in the item. Save the image and now open up my animator again. Add new item, name it hair1 underline 2 which stands for the second layer. Browse for the item sheets again so it updates because we changed it and now select this last item you made. You can log this hair 1.2 1 underscore 2 onto your original hair. Let's adjust the rotation point so it goes lower and I just want to keep it on 7. Now if we drag the item out, as you see, it's got a nice extrusion to it. And I did that basically on all of my rigs. This is the entire secret. This is all there is to it, there's really not much I can tell you. So that was it, this is the tutorial how to make a 3D hair extrusion. Also works with the body, so if you want to mess with that, also you can do that. One more tip, if you want to do that with the body, you can lock it onto his right arm. You get to choose whether it's locked in the lower half or the upper half. The only difference is that on the upper half it rotates as it should, normally. And if you lock it onto the lower half, it's gonna rotate by the bending. So if you bend it, looks like he's holding it. It's gonna rotate with the bending as well. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and good luck with your hair rigs in the future. So thank you for watching, hit that subscribe button for more and leave a comment for what you want to see in the future. Thank you for watching and stay sharp.